All right, we've talked about a lot of topics so far this week, but what happens if we stick them all in a cauldron and sort of swirl them around together? Well, our two standards that we've talked about so far, 802.1D and 802.1Q, we know that one followed the other and they introduced us to spanning tree and then rapid spanning tree and then we added VLANs in there. And oh, by the way, multiple spanning tree per VLAN spanning tree, how switches operate, how switches operate with the changes in VLANs. We also know that VLANs create these containers, these logical groupings of ports on a network. Now what that means is that you're going to take switches and break them up logically. And then you're going to take that switch and connect it to a whole bunch of other switches that are also broken up logically. Now when you look at a physical topology, it's almost impossible to tell what's going on with the virtual or logical topology, which means that how traffic is actually flowing is almost never how the wires are actually connected. Now we add VLANs, and then, oh, by the way, we're going to add spanning tree, which sometimes creates suboptimal topologies for us, and we have no idea how traffic is actually flowing. So let's take this as our sample topology. We have a couple of switches here. They're connected in a loop, and now we've got trunks. And the reason that we've got trunks is because we're moving away from everybody being on VLAN 1. So we're going to add a couple of VLANs and then see what happens to our topology when we start creating loops. So by default, on the, the left-hand side of your image here, we've got VLAN 1. And we know that this is a loop. So what we're looking at here is the topology from the perspective of the top switch again. And in this particular case, we see that port 16 is blocked. And it's an alternate because now we know that that's got an alternate path to the root that could fail over for us. When we add VLANs, so we add VLAN 11 and 12, and that's on the right-hand side here. And we see that, huh, port 16 is blocked for both VLAN 11 and VLAN 12. So what's happened here is that we added VLANs to the switches. And all of the VLANs resolve their logical topology in exactly the same way. And if we think about that for a sec, it makes sense because what VLANs do is change the priority. So if you look at the priority for VLAN 1, it's 32769. We look at the priority for VLAN 11, 32768 plus 11, 32779, and same thing with VLAN 12. And if all we're doing is changing the priority, and we change the priority for the VLANs in all three switches, then the topology will again resolve itself really based on MAC address. So the topology resolves itself in the exact same way for all three VLANs. So if you're trying to wrap your head around this, imagine that you're in VLAN 1 and you're trying to talk to another node in VLAN 1. Well, you can only get to that node from a particular direction because there's a port in the loop that's blocked. If you're on VLAN 11 and you're trying to talk to another node in VLAN 11 or you're in VLAN 12, the same problem exists. It just so happens that every one of the VLANs block the same port. Okay, now the, the big deal happens when spanning tree doesn't do things the way that we think it ought to. So if we look at resources on the VLANs, so let's stick a VLAN 11 server out there on the upper right switch and then we'll stick a VLAN 12 server on the lower switch so we can see that and if we assume that all the VLANs are going to block that same port they're all going to block that port on on the same switch now if you're on VLAN 11 and you're on the bottom switch or in the right switch you're in good shape getting to your resources but if you're in the upper left you've got to go all the way around the topology. Now I get it, it's a small topology, but who cares? The point is that you have to go all the way around the topology to get to your resources. So it's suboptimal. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if that port was not blocked and a port on the opposite side of the topology was blocked? So everybody just had to go part of the way. And look at VLAN 12. If you're on the upper switch, you're in good shape. And if you're on, well, on either side, you're in good shape because your resources are okay. You have an optimal topology in this case. It's the VLAN 11 that has trouble. So what, what spanning tree did was not what we wanted it to do. It optimized things for one VLAN and didn't optimize things for another. Now if we knew about that we might change where our servers are, but what if we can't? 
What if this, the servers are located in a particular location and those are the drops that we have? Well, in that case, we might want to manipulate spanning tree or rapid spanning tree to convert the topology to make more sense for a particular VLAN. So we're going to do the same thing that we've always done with spanning tree when we want to create a new route, and that is manipulate priority. So what this allows us to do in both the, the cases of the multiple spanning tree and also per VLAN spanning tree is that it allows us to have a different instance of spanning tree on every single VLAN. So we can, if we want, create a different logical topology for every single VLAN. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take VLAN 1, we're going to make one switch the root, and then for VLANs 11 and 12, we're going to make the other switches the root. And what that does is it optimizes the topology for us. So if we look at VLAN 1 on the left here again, all the ports are forwarding on this particular switch. Now this is the, remember it's the, the switch in the upper right hand side. But now if we take a look, we've got for VLAN 11 and 12, different ports are blocking. And so the point there is that if you're on VLAN 11, traffic flows in a particular direction. If you're on VLAN 12, traffic flows the other way. That's the whole idea. And in that case, the traffic is optimized for every VLAN, not just one of them. So our new topology might be something like this, where for VLAN 11, we've locked a particular port. And so now to get to the resources on VLAN 11, everybody takes the shortest path. And to get to the resources in your on VLAN 12, everybody gets the shortest path. Same exact thing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. That was our look at interoperation of VLANs and RSTP or SDP. And we can see that for every single VLAN, if we want to, we can manipulate the virtual or logical topology to make it special for that particular VLAN. Or if we just let Spanning Tree do its thing, Spanning Tree will resolve the topology all by itself. It might be suboptimal, and for every single VLAN in that case, the topology will be exactly the same. Hey, subscribe and like if I helped, and remember, hope your packets always reach their destinations.